everyone, Bernard's here. Hope you're all well. Welcome to the Citizen Channel. And today we have a City present vlog, don't we? It's a, a big match review on the Premier League game City versus Arsenal. Yeah, we'll have our usual features, highlights, lowlights of the game, match talking points, match stats, plus the very popular quirky stats. Our Pep last season watch. Uh, Manchester News and my own ratings on there, uh, media headlines and more as we look back at this game. Please, if you're new to the channel, push that subscribe button, push the bell notification so you know these vlogs are coming out. I'll be absolutely fantastic. Make sure your notifications are set to public as well so you get to hear about these. And please tell your, tell your friends about me if, uh, if you they don't know already and please introduce them to me. That'll be absolutely fantastic. Comments are always very, very welcome, please. All your comments, any, any things you think about what I say or you think about City in general, that'll be absolutely fantastic. And if you can't leave a comment, it's nice to get views, but just a little thumbs up would be nice as well. If you can get thumbs up, it's nice to know you're out there watching that'd be fantastic and if you're in at all into movies or tv dramas don't forget check my playlist i do reviews on tv dramas films and little quizzes on there as well for movie fans so please check that out as well or point someone in that direction if you know someone who might be interested that's absolutely fantastic right city versus arsenal there we go city starting lineup well Four changes to the Leeds United game. I mean, three of those were perhaps forced on Pep, weren't they, for, for injuries. We've got Mendy injured again. Um, <laughs> I don't know what to say about that. He's another one of these uh, glass legs players, isn't he, that uh, we're going to see more on the bench and playing, unfortunately. Uh, he wasn't cheap, was he, either, but there you go. Laporte, um, apparently our Mr Balls of Steel, wasn't he, of, uh, according, obviously, this happened this week, if you saw the old, I don't know, I can't remember his name now, I don't I don't watch the guy, but obviously he pops up every now and then on my Twitter feeds, etc., that United fan who obviously commented on a FIFA 21 game I assume he was playing at the time and it uh, hit Mr Laporte in a certain area and bounced uh, down and over the bar so yeah it's, uh, Mr Laporte jokingly put on his own Twitter account about him having balls of steel so uh, he's got legs of glass though that's the unfortunate thing because obviously he's picked up an injury as well hasn't he and of course we had KDB unavailable because of the international duty problem so uh yeah, the four changes. The other one was Torres, wasn't it? It was Torres dropped then. Um, I'm not too sure on that one. I don't know what's happened there. He's obviously on the subs bench, wasn't he? So, yeah, it's probably probably a good decision by Pep uh, to give him a bit of a rest for this one. So the starting eleven: Edison, Walker, Diaz, Anaki, Cancelo, Rodri, Mares, Foden, Bernardo, Sterling as a captain. He was a captain for the day. And Aguero, welcome back, Sergio Aguero. Oh, Great stuff. The subs, Stefan Stones, Gundogan, Torres, Ferner, Delap and Garcia. Yeah, my initial line-up thoughts. Uh, I think considering his options, this is probably the best he could come up with. I was surprised by Aguero, but again, he, he probably his options he had, that was probably the best he's going to play him rather than Delap, isn't he? Let's be honest about it. And we do know Aguero does take time to get into the swing of things, doesn't he? So... I was hoping that pre-match it was more of a nuisance factor and obviously that was uh, going to be uh, sort of what it was plus some nice little touches as well so uh, yeah I was quite happy with that team I think uh, pre-match on Twitter there wasn't much too much being said about the team there was a lot of Mendes or you know is he injured again a lot of stick about that and uh, there's a bit of pessimism actually in the city you know me I'm the eternal pessimist I'm a glass half full as you know but uh, I still thought we could win this, but there's a lot of pessimism amongst the, the City fans. And I think Arsenal are being taught, taught up, I think, which is fair enough, because Arteta's doing a good job. But, uh, you know, we're at home. It's City. Come on, guys. Have a bit more positivity. And that's coming from me, so there you go. Uh, and it's great to have Sergio back. Most people were saying that. And obviously some nice comments about Sterling being captain as well. Uh, the referee of the day, we'll talk about him in my little ref watch piece uh, after the match, highlights and lowlights. Uh, comes was Chris Kavanagh, not, not one that sort of stands in your mind as being the refs that we don't like, to be honest with you, but uh, interesting thoughts, well, some little thoughts on him after the after the match highlights and lowlights. So we got into the highlights and there wasn't too many lowlights, was there actually? It's just mainly highlights, I think, yesterday. Uh, we started brightly and we had a, we had a good chance 
Amarez wide. I mean, he could have been a little bit closer, couldn't he? After about 38 seconds and a nice little passing movement. And City did start passing very, very well and quickly at the start. The pace, you know, the up the pace, which they had to against a very young Arsenal side. Let's be honest about it. Uh, first half chance fell to Aguero, but it, I think Mares had sort of blasted it at him and Aguero did okay to get his get his head on it. I mean, obviously it was a Sherry Spad Jedder as it sort of zoomed over the bar, but I don't think he, he saw it. I think he saw it late and it was, it was hit with pain. Okay, so that was fair enough. We had our first of four bookings in the of the day uh, on thirteen minutes. Rodri just looking clumsy and holding back a player got booked after thirteen minutes, which meant he had to behave himself, didn't he? Which you know, I know Fernie used to do those, didn't he? But he obviously had a good rep. You know, he'd built his reputation by then. Rodri's not quite built his reputation yet, and there's still a little bit. The jury's out on Mr. Rodri. And it wasn't one of his better displays yesterday, but uh, after being booked after thirteen minutes. We weren't going to be treated to any Rodri's rockets, were we? That's for sure during the game. Uh, 22 minutes, 23 minutes, City made 1 0 up, didn't he? Great pace. Uh, City had been doing this uh, for early doors, breaking at pace, some great little movement between Mares, Aguero, uh, lined it up for Foden, who had a great shot set. Well, he hit the target, let's be honest. I'm not saying it was a great shot, but at least he hit the target. It was saved, but of course, Mr. Sterling calmly put it in with his left foot, and that's that's what we want to see from Raheem. He just uh, just placed it nicely. He didn't he didn't uh, fanny about with it like he tends to do these days. He just puts it put it in the far corner. It was fantastic. And at last, it woke out Arsenal up, didn't it? In a, in a bad way. I mean, on 24, 25 minutes at least, Edison was tested. Although it was a fairly fairly simple shot, was it from? Uh, I'm not sure who the, who the guy was, the Arsenal player, but it sort of straight at him and he, he put it over the bar, which is fair enough. And then Pepe had a great chance, but he put his header wide, well, again, well wide, a bit Mares esque in his uh, distance wide of the post. But uh, yeah, he was a lot of money, wasn't he, Pepe? Uh, 26 on 26 minutes, Mares had a couple of quick chances as well, which again came to nothing. Uh, 34 minutes, a good, a good pacey move again, featuring Sterling Aguero and uh, Leno blocked. I think Foden should have perhaps done a little bit better. Leno, Leno, who had a great game last time we played Arsenal, remember it at the Etihad, even though we won three 0 Leno blocked the uh, again. Foden at the target. <laughs> That's all we can ask. Perhaps he could have done better, but Leno just made himself big, stuck his right foot out, and managed to put it, managed to save it. Uh, last minutes of the half, uh, yeah, Arsenal were beginning to look good. I was, I was hoping for half time because certainly for the last six or seven minutes, Arsenal were beginning to look to, to tease and have a look at look at uh, put a bit of pressure on the defence. Look, looked a bit sharper. Uh, Edison had to pull, obviously, two greats, you know, and a couple of good saves off. But uh, I mean, there was an offside one, wasn't it? That uh, it's interesting if if it had gone in the goal would it have stood because obviously the the replay shown he was perhaps onside so yeah I mean two great saves from Edison he put one out for a corner that just flew over the side of the bar and the post that was a fantastic one again from from Edison and then he followed up with the offside save which I think wasn't offside so obviously the problem with that is it uh, <laughs> it would have counted as a goal wouldn't it if I ever could understand what VAR is like these days I'm not 100% sure uh, yeah, and that was half time one nil. There was the little manhandling of uh, the lines woman, wasn't there? The lino from Mister Aguero. I'm not quite sure what that was about. At the, at the time, I thought it looked a bit rougher than it looked on replay. Um, obviously, all everyone I was watching on a stream and all the comments from people just for him, he should be sent off. And I think Pierce Morgan said that later on as well. But uh, it was it was nothing, but it was unnecessary. If you know what I mean. I don't know what Aguero was sort of doing, to be honest with you. So. Yeah, he, he should be. I don't think there's any going to be any repercussions. I've not seen too much. Obviously, opposing fans are up in arms as they would be, you know. But uh, yeah, I'm not too quite sure what Sergio was doing there. It just seemed a little bit odd to me. And I say it didn't look as bad actually on replay as it looked to me at the time. Actually, I thought he'd sort of rough handled her a little bit more at the time. But obviously, on replay, it didn't look as bad. Anyway, hopefully, there'll be no repercussions. So second half, uh, good early Arsenal chance. Pepe again should have done better. A lot of money. Did they mention he cost a lot of money, Pepe? He should have. And then he obviously had an injury. But to me, I think he was feigning an injury because he, he knew he should have done better. That's what players do, you know. 54 minutes, a weak effort from Mares again. He was getting, having most of our chances, wasn't he? 62 minutes, Cancelo got himself booked. 64 minutes there, uh, Gundogan came on and Aguero went off. So he did his little party piece, Aguero, didn't he? he? made a nuisance of himself and went off. 67 minutes, 
Diaz was booked. I mean, so we were losing a few plays getting, but I was panicking every time because I could a couple of times I couldn't see who'd made the foul and the referee got his yellow card out. I was thinking it was one of the guys who'd already been booked, but fortunately it wasn't. Seventy six minutes. Yeah, well, our agent, our agent in the camp, uh, Mister um, Sideshow Bob. Sorry, not Sideshow Bob. Uh, David Louise. Sorry. Um, yeah, nearly give us an own goal, didn't he? A great move by Cancelo. Fantastic move down the right. That's where he looked better up from. Uh, nearly brought off an on goal from from our, our agent in the side, Mr. Sideshow Bob. Oh, sorry, sorry, Mr. David Louis, only a bit of fun. But uh, yeah, that almost brought us an own goal that I was hoping for because he wasn't supposed to be in the team, was he? I did, I did tweet before the match started that, hey, that's good news. Uh, Louis is having to play now because of an injury to one of the Arsenal players, so that was quite interesting. Eighty-three minutes, Aki was booked uh, this time for time wasting. I mean, we could have a, we could end up with uh, our defenders and defensive midfielders missing games late on in the season if this carries on. Uh, 86 minutes, a superb ball from Edison and Sterling did everything right. He, he used his, you know, he's not a big lad, is he? But he sort of eased the Arsenal player, or Arsenal defender off the ball and went through on goal. But he couldn't score or lay off again. Again, his decision-making was a little bit... If he had sat Bellerin down even, I mean, he'd done that where he dragged it inside, Bellerin had gone on his bum and obviously, unfortunately, didn't quite know what to do with that. So it came to nothing when really we should, perhaps should have put the game to bed at 2-0 then. Uh, 88 minutes, uh, Fernandino came on just to kill the game off and fold and went off, but uh, the four minutes injury time, there wasn't too much harrowing experience for City fans. I was, I was a bit nervous, but there wasn't too much to worry about. So a full time a one nil win, yeah. The ref watch, Mister Chris Kavanagh. Yeah, I mean, he was okayish the first half, but as with most refs, most refs against City, City, City players, he's quick to book City players. I think other teams get seem to get away with that early doors. You know, they don't don't get the bookings that the City players seem to get. And the second half, he just literally gave everything, as far as I can say, to Arsenal. I mean, absolutely every decision, every fifty fifty, every sort of. Decision where he could perhaps could have let it play on. He he gave to Arsenal all the time, including a couple of a couple of free kicks, you know, twenty odd yards out, which uh, Arsenal fortunately didn't make the most of. And let's face that City obstruction, that obstruction on um, Bernardo as well. I mean, I think Bernardo obviously sort of more ran into the player, but at the end of the day, that was that was to me that was an obstruction. That was an indirect free kick at worst. I, I just okay, we're not going to get penalties, are we? We never do, but. Uh, yeah, so I wasn't impressed with Chris Kavanagh on that. Certainly that second half showing, I thought it was pretty awful. In the first half, he was far too quick to book City players. So I'm going to give him a 4 out of 10, and I think I'm being kind to him there with a 4 out of 10 rating for Mr Chris Kavanagh, who might be joining our list of... Uh, Dodge on my list of dodgy referees, you might think he's crap anyway, but <laughs> I've, I've never really thought much about Chris Kavanagh, to be honest with you, but he's on my list now. Yeah, so to sum up the game... Yes, again, much better first half, weren't we? Uh, we played really well, apart from that last five or ten minutes, which is a sort of trend. But when we're playing Premier teams, we're not always going to have ninth. You know, we're not going to have hundred percent of the game. Are there's going to be ch chances for these teams to come in. Come in it. I mean, Arsenal never really carried on the second half either as they finished the first. The the, the best chances perhaps they had was that early peppy one and then a, a couple of free kicks. But the yeah, they sort of run out of steam a little bit and run out of ideas. Um, and what impressed me about City is we did look strong in the air at the back from corners. I think we, we both had a similar amount of corners. I think it was six each. I'll have the stats in a minute. But uh, we did look stronger in the air, didn't we, the, with those, uh, super, certainly Diaz and Aki, and uh, add the, all the other guys into it as well. I mean, we did look better at the back. And if you, if you think about... Um, Edison, I mean, he was he was tormented, wasn't he? Put Arsenal putting three plays on him at every corner. I mean, that's nothing worse for a keeper. I don't know. I don't care how good the keeper or how bad a keeper is. That that's a tactic I like anyway. That, that's the tactic I'd always play if I was a manager of a team. But, but even my little players, I put little players. I put my three smallest players uh, around the opposition keeper on the corners and stuff like that. But uh, yeah, we did look a lot lot stronger. And Edison did okay. I think he got one foul given in the second half. Once he were. Uh, Probably 50-50, at least Kavanagh did something right. I think when Gundogan came on, and we say, look, we look a little bit more assured, but I think Arsenal run out of ideas by then. So just, I'm not the biggest Gundogan fan, as you know, but uh, yeah, I think we looked a lot better when Gundogan came on and sort of on the 60th minute. And of course, the two great saves from Edison sort of at crucial times kept us in the game. They could have easily equalised and then gone on to take the lead. Uh, they were fantastic uh, and obviously we have to thank Edison, he's one of our 11, and uh, he did some 
some great saves there too because uh, if Arsenal had equalised I think they would have got their uh, danders up and I think it would have been a struggle for City and I think the whole team just worked hard yesterday I was quite impressed that's, that's the hardest I've seen City work for a long time uh, and it's certainly one of the best overall team performances I think the ratings sort of reflect that no one really got a bad bad rating uh, but that's one of the best City performances a gritty City performance I've seen for a while against a, a good Arsenal team yeah I mean as far as Arsenal can see, uh, concern, I'm, I'm impressed with Arteta, I'm impressed with his interviews, his um, post-match, pre-match interviews. Um, I think he's a bit more now. He always seemed to be a bit um, in pep shade when he was at, at uh, the Etihad, but obviously now on his own, he's becoming gaining that confidence. I'm just quite impressed, and uh, it's good to see him enjoying a honeymoon period. As far as the Arsenal fans are concerned, because you know, not unlike us, they're a bit uh, you know they can have a go. The Arsenal fans can't. Let's be honest about it. And I, I think uh, I mean this. I think they're shooting for top six, aren't they? Been interesting, interesting to see how he develops the Arsenal, and he certainly match City yesterday made it a very very tough game. I mean, there's not much between the teams yesterday. All right, City, we've got players to come back and and obviously players to bed in properly. But uh, you know, same same with Arsenal. Uh, so yeah, there wasn't much between the two yesterday, and Arsenal Arsenal look look a bit of a threat. Uh, going forward as long as Arteta get, gets the finances and the players to, to sort of back him up as well I mean that, that party court came on didn't he looked a bit out of it but I mean he only played a few minutes didn't he but uh, it'll be interesting because he's got a bit more grit hasn't he although he's uh, prone to get booked hopefully he'll get booked a few look like our players do and even though I thought, uh, obviously, we lost in the semi-final. I thought Arsenal would actually play better than they did in the semi-final. It's a bit, bit more of an all-round game for them. So, yeah, and we have Edison to thank, I think, for, for keeping, keeping them out, to be honest with you. 1-0, that's all you can say. Your defence and Edison were fantastic yesterday. Match stats. Shots, uh, 13 by City, 5 on target. 11 by Arsenal, 3 on target. So not much between that. Possession, 59%, 41% for City. Passes, 665 by City with an 88% accuracy, it's usually up about 90, so again that was the pressure of Arsenal wasn't it, Arsenal had 454 passes, not quite, it's got 84% accuracy, foul City committed 15, again you know that's normal these days, but very rarely we get an opposition team with more, making more fouls than us, Arsenal uh, committed 10, corners 6 each, Right, the player ratings, the Manchester Evening News. Uh, uh, I think this is Stuart Brennan. I couldn't, I forgot to make a note. My apologies. It could be Stuart Brennan. I'll put on the, uh, I'll put on the screen if it's Stuart Brennan or Mr. Barkovsky. Please, my apologies. Uh, not doing my work right. I thought I'd done everything and uh, I missed that. Right, the Evening News player ratings and this guy's player ratings that, that was on the screen then. Right, Edison spelt correctly by me this time. Thank you for someone noticing that I spelt Edison wrong. I, I'd only stood behind him for God knows how many matches and still spelt his name wrong. But uh, I'm not sure if I did it all the time or just on one or two occasions. But I prob knowing me, I'd probably done it all the time. So Edison, S-O-N, not S-E-N. Outstanding save from Sakran Aubameyang. I've got that right. Even if the offside flag wrongly and belatedly helped out with the latter. Well, it wouldn't, would it? Because VAR would have given the goal, surely. Preserve City's lead, a confident performance after that error at least. So he's give him eight, Edison. I give him eight as well. And I'll tell you now, he's my joint top score of the uh, ratings today. So he wasn't offside for the goal, so I think it would have been given. I, mean, I might be wrong, let me know in a comment. I might not. As I said, this VAR is so hard to keep up with. Uh, he did make himself big to make a couple of great saves. And they say on the corners where he was had three, men, three big men surrounding him, he did. I think he did pretty well as well at <laughs> that stage. So great game from Edison, I thought. Walker, good sweeping up at the back as ever. If his high foot in the box is a penalty, the game is well and truly gone. I have to agree with uh, with that comment. I give him seven, and um, Emi, he's got seven from the MEN as well. Diaz composed under pressure. There was barely a moment when he did not look in control of the situation. He made sure he was in the right place to cut out cut out a dangerous Arsenal attack at the cusp of half time. He has slotted straight in, so he's given eight. Put eight. I'm going to give him eight as well. My, again, my joint highest scorer. I thought it was great, solid stuff from Diaz. What we needed, and uh, it's what we wanted ever since company, isn't it, really? We need that sort of powerhouse at the back. Uh, very company-esque, I think uh, we could say about that. Aki, coach well with the extremely nippy Nicholas Pep. Pepe, keeping him quiet, an unexpected draw on the left. So he's giving him 7, I thought I'd give him 7.5. I thought he did really well, Aki. I was quite impressed. He was, uh, he was one of our better players and, and looked so composed and confident in everything he did. 
Cancelo eager and positive tracking from position in front of the defence but could not adjust to having players behind him. There was almost a costly error when he was caught dawdling in possession but bailed out by Edison. Yeah, he's only given him a 6. I'll give him a 6.5. I'll be a bit kinder because he look, did look dangerous going forward. Yeah, and obviously, as I said, if you're going to expect these fullbacks to go forward, they're perhaps going to make mistakes in defence. So I'll give him 6.5. Um, a little bit better than the MEN rate. Rodri, given a torrid time by Saka and was booked as early as the 12th minute for trying to pull him back. Better after the break as City spent far more time than they usually would defend in their own half. So he's given a six. Yeah, I mean, I, would, I think he was possibly our weakest player on the day. So I'll give him a six as well. Um because I think he was one of the weaker links yesterday, unfortunately. Bernardo, a unique role moving between defence and attack, and he did very well. A quietly effective performance that brought back memories of the Bernardos from two seasons ago where he started similarly and grew into the best player in the division. He's only given him a 7, though. I mean, I give him a 7.5, almost give him an 8, because I thought he was fantastic. He was a willing ball carrier all over the pitch. He had plenty of confidence. Uh, it did stick. He did his bubble, bubble gum. It very rarely, he very, a couple of times, he, he sort of misplaced a pass or he lost it, but basically, it stuck to his boot, doesn't he? So, a lot of confidence there, and he was certainly almost, almost up there with Diaz and Edison on the scores for me. But I'll give him a seven point five. I won't, I won't match him with the other two guys because that they were outstanding. Folded and he showed his class for the first goal, cutting in effortlessly, effortless, ooh, effortlessly, and testing the keeper. Another quiet performance overall, albeit it's difficult to be harsh given he was moved around a lot and up as a false nine. Yeah, so he's only given him a six again, a bit of it mean. This sounds like Stuart Brennan, actually. I'm mean, probably wrong, it probably isn't. He's quite mean with his scores, isn't it? Uh, I'm going to give Folden a seven. Yeah, I think. Not everything worked, but 110% effort and a constant, constant problem for Arsenal, obviously knowing where he's going. He sometimes gets the bounce of the ball, he sometimes doesn't get the bounce of the ball when he takes players on, but at least he's willing to, he's willing there, he's a willing outlet. So I'll give him seven because I, I think six is a bit mean. Mares offers City the direct approach, always happiest when he had the ball at his feet on the edge of the box, ready to take on a defender and or shoot. Went close a couple of times and decent overalls. Yeah, so he's giving him seven. I'd give him seven as well. He was he was annoying and, and fine and okay in equal measures again. And that is Mares. I think we're going to have to accept that, aren't we? He can be an absolute pain with some of his poor finishing. I don't think anything will ever change with Mares while whilst he's at City, unfortunately. Or fortunately, but he has a good a good uh, a good does a good thing. Sterling, it wasn't a vintage performance, yet he ultimately was the match winner. He has developed a useful knack of scoring goals, however he plays. Not that his industrious display disappointed. So he gave him a seven, yeah, a bit of it kinder. I think 7.5. Uh, a wee bit of disappointment with him in, again with his decision making around the box. And he needs to be greedy like Mara's at times and just shoot. But... Uh, uh, his decision making still needs working on. I thought he'd sorted it out a year or two ago, and not, but he's become a lot better. But he's become a bit hesitant again for me. But uh, yeah, I'm going to give him 7.5. I thought he played really well. Aguero, a quiet return in his first game back for five months, although his presence in the middle seems to settle the team. They had to play without a natural strike for most of the year. And he's only given him a six. I mean, I've, I've not gone mad. I've given him a 6.5. But as I'd hoped, he, he's obviously going to need time. And he was a bit of a bloody nuisance to Arsenal. So, and he did take part in some nice little moves as well. So, yeah, I mean, even 6.5 is quite lowish. But, uh, yeah, I think... Uh, he needs time, obviously, so it's it's just about what I expected from him, to be honest with you. And the substitutes, the only one worth marking was Gundogan, who came on for Aguero on 65 minutes. A solid run out in his first appearance. He's given, again, he's only given him a six. Uh, I've given him a seven, Gundogan. I thought he, he kept everything calm, and he seemed to calm down and play a lot better when he arrived. As I said, Arsenal will probably run out of run out of options and ideas a little bit by then, but uh, no, I thought he played well for, for the half an hour he was on the pitch. Uh, the City man of the match then, obviously based on that, is uh, a joint one today. I'm going to give a joint one. I'm not going to separate them. Diaz and Edison as my joint City man of the matches. Both got eight out of ten. And say three or four other players got very very close to that. You know the seven seven point five. So, but yeah, those two. Pep watching his last season. Well, yeah, he looked fit, didn't he? Look, he looks uh, a little bit tanned when I saw him in this press conference post uh, pre match. Good team selection, given, you know, it works better when he's not got lots of different alternatives, does he? We know what to expect, and based on the players he had available, that team selection was probably, I probably could have guessed nine or ten of those, even though I didn't commit myself the other day because I was a bit worried about injuries, but certainly would have got nine or ten out of his 11 starting lineup. Um 
not sure he really wanted to play Aguero from the start, but it, it was a it was a good decision. Uh, he knew he was going to bring him off, obviously. So, and he knew he'd, he'd worry and be annoyance and worry Arsenal, which was a great decision. Uh, a nice coat. I've not found a picture of the coat to put up, but he had a nice coat on. I noticed as well. Uh, Post match. Uh, he did comment, it was difficult, we have won 1-0 and Edison again was incredibly active like he was against Leeds. It was an important victory added. The clean sheet was important, but it's not the most important thing they fought and had the desire to win. It was impressive against a team that has everything to be contended to win the Premier League. So there you go, we knew it would be a tight game, a difficult one, but for us winning games is important for the confidence and mentality. We are still a little bit away from our best performance that we are wishing, but for many reasons it's not possible. The victory helped us a lot. We defended really well deep and up front and it's a good three points against an impressive opponent uh, asked about his players he said Ruben and Nathan they they don't make mistakes explained Pep uh, we suffered a lot last season with the amount of mistakes we made still we have to improve I have the feeling they are real defenders we can't deny that I have to help I mean Laporte might be is our backup uh, centre half now isn't it I have to help them to build up to create spaces the way we want to play we have time to do that in training asked about Edison Edison is an incredible keeper for us, said the City boss. He's fantastic as a professional and he's is so good. We expected it when we signed him, but you never know all the clubs in the world when they sign a player, they expect the best of him. Sometimes they're not professional enough or their mentality is not strong enough, but from day one he has been so strong. Good moments and bad moments don't affect him. He made an incredible two saves from Saka and Obama Yang. Uh, pet rating, yeah, I'm gonna give him not gonna give him eight, but I'll give him a seven a good solid seven point five out of seven for yesterday. Yeah, I'm quite impressed. And I was quite happy with Pep my pet watch yesterday. He looked he looked a bit happy. Perhaps he's heard something about the January transfer winner. I'm not too sure, but I'm sure there'll be more of that to follow. Um Captain Brian, St Brian Sterling, yeah, he was he was asked. He said it's a massive win today against a very difficult team. They made it difficult, so we're really pleased to come away with three points. It was a nice feeling to put on the captain's armband and to cap it off with a winning goal is great. My form is all right. It could be a bit better, but I'll keep working hard. He was asked about his teammates. It's always good to have Sergio back. He brings fluidity to the team. And I thought Ruben played really well and won all his headers and is a great addition to the squad. Bernardo played really well as well. To say, as I say, we're happy. There we go from Sterling, the captain. Quirky stats. Up to Joe. Pep Guardiola has won 500 games in all competitions as a manager, including Barcelona B, winning 172 as Manchester City boss. Of the last six occasions that Manchester City have failed to score in a Premier this was before the game, so I don't like these. On the last six occasions that Manchester City have failed to score in a Premier League match, five have been when Kevin De Bruyne has not started. De Bruyne has scored more Premier League goals against Arsenal than he has versus any other side. Fortunately, we didn't miss him at the end of the day. Arsenal have lost each of their last seven league games against City, their longest such run against opponents since losing seven in a row versus Ipswich between 1974 and 77. From at Stat City, Ruben Diaz completed 89 passes today, more than any other player on the pitch. Very good. Of the 104 goals Ryan Sterling scored for Man City, 48 of them have seen the Blues either take the lead or equalise. That's 46%. Ryan Sterling has been directly involved in six goals in his last five Premier League appearances against Arsenal. Four goals and two assists. Quite impressive. Ryan Sterling has now scored 104 goals for Manchester City in all competitions, overtaking Sean Golter on 103 and moving into 16th place as the all-time goal scorer's table for the club. And the BBC is one for the BBC, just for good measure. Edison has kept 53 clean sheets in the Premier League since his debut in August 2017. 15 more than any other goalkeeper in this time. There you go, the media, the headlines, summations on the, in the media. The independent, Man City hold on to victory in tactical chess game against Arsenal. Yeah, that's true. The Guardian, Ryan Sterling goal gives Manchester City comfortable win over Arsenal. I wouldn't say comfortable. <laughs> Being sports, Sterling strikes settles tactical encounter between City and Arsenal. Yep. Yeah. The Mirror, Manchester City secured a narrow victory over Arsenal in a rather cagey affair on Saturday night as the Sky Blues passing play edged out the Gunners' counter-attacking style. Yeah, sort of. The BBC, master beats pupil, simple. The sum, maybe the result that kickstarts Manchester City season. Well, I was hoping, I did say well, I wanted to run a consistency now from, from City and uh, hopefully that'll start it. Finally, from the Telegraph, sloppy and spineless against Leicester. I think he's referring to City. Rugged and resolute and reluctant to give an inch here. So there you are. That was it. it started off bad, but it went better, didn't it, that one? So that leaves City nine, six points behind current leaders. Everton, Everton, eh? Um, we've got a game in hand, so it's not all doom and gloom. And Arsenal's life 
fifth at the moment. So anyway, thanks for joining me. I hope you enjoyed that. Please let me know in the comments. It's nearly half an hour. I better get on with this answer. I don't. don't I always try to aim for twenty minutes, but uh, hope you enjoyed that. Anyway, let me know in the comments what you think. We'll be back with the preview of the Porto game, of course, the Champions League game. So we'll be back to preview with a preview of that on Tuesday, the 20th of October, for the game on Wednesday, the 21st of October, 8 pm kickoff. And please check out my recent Citizen Channel City Past things. So please check the playlist for that. I've uh, put two or three out recently. Uh, on screen are my links. Uh, if you follow or friend me on Facebook and Twitter, I do check every every couple of days and follow and friend everyone back because if you have to follow as a friend let me know on there and my my day job of course to earn a little bit of money moviegamenostalgia.com if you can have a look at there for old rare dvds movie posters and 90 to 2000 board games that'll be absolutely fantastic and as i said if you're into movies or tv dramas etc please check out my play my playlist on the as well as the citizen channel and my my bernard's film and tv channel i call it very original i'm just going to call it all the citizen channel at some stage but uh, that's what i do at the moment anyway so that'll be absolutely fantastic uh, have a look at that if there's anything you're interested in or are you, are you wondering whether you want to watch something you think oh is it worth a watch have a think what i think i mean you know, I'm, I'm usually a lot of common sense so well i think so anyway and uh, might point in the right direction Anyway, thanks for joining for this big match review. Please leave your comments. Uh, whatever you're going to do with the rest of the day, have a great one. Look after yourselves, look after your friends, look after your families. More important, look after each other. And until we meet again, on hopefully on Tuesday, or if you watch another of my little vlogs, uh, even sooner. Thanks for watching. Do the same, please. Stay safe, Blues. Bye-bye.